me a winner takes all yet huh huh you want to put me in the ring how about with seraphini you felt good putting her in the battle royal and she got her head kicked right off her shoulders by big league john mcchesney put her in the ring come on come on because i am the best that iwc has to offer and by the end of this year i will once again be the iwc champion iwc is the best company in the world and it deserves a leader like john mcchesney running it now get this out of my face somebody cut the tape we gotta got start a show i got a show to run here come on we Hi, uh, Justin Blummer here, welcoming you to another episode of IWC Aftershock. Uh, as you obviously saw, John McChesney, not a happy camper, a very rough night at Combat and Clearfield 4, 14 Big League. But the night actually started off hot for these guys, because the first match of the night was an over-the-top rope battle royal, in which the winner would get a world heavyweight title shot against Logan Chulo later on in the night. Now, Big League John McChesney didn't win that match, but he did do something so disgusting, so despicable, that we're just going to have to take a look for ourselves. April, a woman in the Battle Royal. Justin Trini, just like Justin Trini, a bunch of them. I want to be in it. We're going to bring it! Let her in! Sarah Feeney's done great in women's matches, but she's never competed hey, with the men. There's one more person that's one less chance you got. April, you got it. First time for everything, Joe. An intergender battle royal. Oh, wow. Corey Futuristic. Corey Futuristic steps up to the plate. He says, I'll be the first to hit a woman. Oh. Corey claims to have been trained by many fourth and fifth generation oh, wrestlers, oh. and he's out of there. It didn't help seem to be on a collision course with That's should right, you man. survive tonight. Yes. IWC champion, super indie champion meeting head on at IWC Combat yeah. Clearfield. That's hot news. Hey, uh, little known fact. I don't know if you picked up on this. It might be an oh my. Look what, out. There what went, an elimination there. There went Cal Riss. Now, Sarah Feeney unfortunately had to be rushed to a local medical facility. A little bit more on that later, but as I mentioned, Big League did not win the Battle Royal. He was eliminated. Unfortunately, he came back to the ring, interfered, and helped one of Team Big League members, Bobby Fish, win that match and go on to face Logan Chula later in the night. Now, this is where things started to go downhill for Team Big League because as part of a big eight-man tag match that involved Team Big League members, Marshall Gambino and Chess Flexor, well, let's just say things got a little bit out of control and we saw Marshall Gambino walk out on his friend, his partner, Chess Flexor. Let's take a look at how that all went down. Now we got some tags. Castle's in, Flexer has no clue where he is and Marshall has bailed on him. What's that about? The German Castle and Company win. What in the hell just happened? We were looking for tags. Time stood still for a second. Marshall drops down. What in hell, Flexer? Is there a malfunction in the big league junction here? So there it was, and now we all know Marshall Gambino. He just got out of that West Virginia prison. Uh, maybe he's still frustrated about that. Maybe he's angry about Chess Flexor's losing streak, so to speak, as of late. Either way, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for more on that situation. Now, the night continued to get worse for Team Big League as Bobby Fish battled Logan Shulo for the title. He lost the match. Team Big League left Clearfield empty-handed and very frustrated. But things are about to get a little bit worse for Team Big League because, well, while Serafini was in that local medical facility in Clearfield, she made a call to Norm Connors. And as we all know, Norm has a long list of friends in the business. Long story short... Norm made a phone call, and it is now official. December 15th, winner takes all. It's going to be Big League John McChesney one-on-one -on -one with the wrestling legend, the hardcore icon, the innovator of violence, 
Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> now, I hate to say it, Bigly, but it looks like there's a little bit of revenge in store coming December, so I hope you're ready. Now, I think Team Big League had enough airtime for Aftershock. Let's, let, let's forget about them for a minute. Let's move on to another group. Another group of men who's been dominating in the IWC. The Tag Team Champions, the Founding Fathers. Because at Combat in Clearfield 4, one of those members, one half of the Tag Team Champions, Dennis Gregory, battled former WWE superstar Colin Delaney. Now in this match, if Delaney won, he gets a shot at a Tag Team title match on December 15th with a partner of his choosing to be named later. Well, let's just cut right to the chase. Let's take a look at some highlights from that match and take a look at who came out on top. And uh, not coming out alone, however, Jimmy Vegas not here tonight due to whatever reason. I would rather not know. He's probably working out. Wouldn't surprise me. He's big. You have to work out to get that big. But Dennis Gregory, his biggest gift is his mind. His mind, Joe, and the Founding Fathers they say they never lost the titles, they say they always had them, and they say they're here to save the IWC Tag Team Title Division. Heads up! Oh. And that's exactly what they've done so far. They've been dominant since coming back and winning those titles. I'm a big fan of Colin, I'm a friend of Colin's. He was out here earlier tonight. I see the passion, the fire he has in his eyes once more. I always actually thought you were more than friends, but what's interesting about this match tonight a singles match, but if he wins, he gets a tag team title shot. No matter whatsoever, that was a contract provision that was placed in in the old administration before the Founding Fathers originally went downhill. They put a lot of loopholes and a lot of red tape ironclad to protect themselves. Guaranteed. That's one of the reasons why these guys are still employed here to begin with. But Colin Delaney quickens the pace. Nice drop kick takedown. And Delaney is feeling that momentum. No better way to secure future IWC work than win a title, I'll tell you that. He could do it. Oh, I see. And Colin takes out head tie. Oh. And about half the first row, too. All right, Colin gets the knee up. Drop kick, nicely done. And Colin's got some momentum. He's got to catch his wind here. He's got to take advantage of this. This may be the only window of opportunity he has to try to put this one away and earn a tag team title shot. And with Dennis Gregory, that window won't stay open long. Huge close line. Second time. And Colin, Darren head time. That's a mistake. And I. Understand the heart, the desire of Colin Delaney. Yeah, more serious side than I'm, I'm used to seeing. I like it. Don't question his heart. Don't question the fire that burns inside. Gregory with a neck breaker. And that could do it here. The veterans got it. No. no. Half a count away from the door being shut on Colin's tag title aspirations. Gregory drives Colin down with that pump handle slam. That could do it here. Founding Fathers protect themselves. No! Another near fall. A little hesitant to start that count there. That may have been the difference between the two and the three. Very well could have. Colin needs every second he can get at this point. Whoops, well, slides up through. Hentai waiting. Sidestep, look at Colin. Colin outmaneuvers everybody. Roll up, Whoa. Colin wins it. So you see Colin Delaney picking up the big victory and that means he's got a title shot on December 15th against the Founding Fathers. Now these men said they never lost the titles, they always had them, and they claimed they were back to dominate the tag division in the IWC. They've done just that, but December 15th we will see if Colin Delaney and his mystery partner can end that reign of dominance. Now that's not all, there's so much more booked already 
for winner takes all? You gotta look forward to the fans' dream match. Chuck Roberts went to Facebook and he asked the fans what they wanted to see. And your wishes were granted because we're going to see the Kentucky gentleman Chuck Taylor go one on one with the party peacock Dalton Castle. So much charisma in this one, I don't know if Court Time Sports Center is going to be able to contain it all. And that's not all. We have an eight man tag team match because we're going to see the fallout of the crumbling of. Team Big League, because Marshall Gambino will once again team with Chess Flexor. This time, they'll be joined by Andrew Palace, and they will battle Justin Idol, HD Cannon, and the returning John Bolin. Elsewhere, we are going to have a four-way dance where the winner will get a future shot at the IWC Super Indie title. We already know two men booked for that match. It's going to be Team Big League member Bobby Fish and an IWC returnee, Anthony Nice. Two more men to be announced later. You gotta check IWCWrestling.com for the updates. And folks, how can we forget? It's title versus title. When heavyweight champion Logan Shulo battles super indie champion Michael the Bomber Facade, it's one on one, a 30 minute Iron Man match. It's truly going to be winner takes all. Folks, stay tuned to IWCWrestling.com for updates throughout the month leading into our final event of the year. The IWC is sure to end 2012 with a bang. But until then, unfortunately, we are all out of time. But as always, if you're still with us, you just survived the Aftershock. <laughs> Shut your damn mouth, Justin Plummer. Nobody wants to hear that cheesy-ass tagline anymore. Oh, you just felt the aftershock. You know who's going to feel the aftershock? It's Tommy Dreamer on December 15th. Chuck Roberts and you, NCON, Norm Connors. You've been out of the game for a long time. You can't stop me from becoming the IWC world champion again. Shut this damn show off! <laughs>